In this episode, Corey Davis and Dr. Rob talk about trans fats, grass fed butter, and omega 3 versus omega 6 fatty acids. Just a second, I gotta let the cat out. I totally forgot to do that before. Now he's the me cat out of the bag, buddy. The cat out of the bag. And we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, so. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, people, so people know about trans fats, right? Like, trans fats have entered the general consciousness through people like Dr. Weil. And some, you know, some, you know, I'm sure Dr. Oz has tackled it and other major health authorities that people look to for this kind of information. I'm sorry, Dr. Who? Uh, yeah, they're, no, they're big in the United States. You may not have them up there on Canadian TV, but uh, down here yeah. we have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Dr. Oz, Dr. Wow, talking about trans fats. And people think that in order to get a trans fat, you have to either be eating like lard or hydrogenated oils. And hydrogenation is how you make a trans fat. But that's yeah. not actually true. All it is is uh, there's cis fats and then there's trans fats in almost any oil as far as the potential. And it's typically the heating process or processing process that will turn a delicate cis fat into a trans fat. So, you're right. so not only is there a oxidation component going on, but there's also a transification, if I may yeah. uh, use that term loosely, right? That can happen through any kind of high heat cooking of, of certain oils, right? For sure. And, and, and so that's the other thing. So I use the term oxidized or maybe inflamed fat it's sort of it, i That's guess cool. it's more it's as a like a simplified it. I like that. Yeah, yeah so it's not really maybe the technical term but you're right once you heat it the bottom line is just you're changing that fat into something that's infinitely uh less healthy or more that's damaging right. and right. especially over a long period of time and so as far as chronic disease is concerned and so yeah that's actually what i spend a majority of my book talking about and going through diet and everything. It's just a huge, 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 huge point. So when you think of the magnitude of just taking oil and pouring it on the pan versus measuring it out in a teaspoon or tablespoon, mm -hmm. huge, huge difference. By the way, on the calorie side, I think I agree with you about not really being obsessed with calories, but I think the major reason why that's the new train of thought or relatively new train of thought is because a lot of low calorie products are horrible mm -hmm. for you. They have all, so many additives right. and but if let's say you were eating a clean diet, relatively clean, nutrient dense, whole food diet, you still need to be mindful of calories. You can't just dump a bunch of oil in your diet and expect nothing to happen. You will gain weight. You just yes. will. Yeah, I, I'm a living testament of that because I have one of the cleanest <laughs> diets of anyone I know. So am I, buddy. Yeah. So am I. Yeah, really I can see. I was going to say, and your chin really, it speaks loudly to the perhaps the fact you know? that Rob is a carboholic, not a carboholic, but a. a uh, a calorieaholic like me. a lover I love my of fats. I love food. satiety. Fat mm -hmm. is satiating. Like it makes me feel like I've eaten something substantial whenever it's very fatty. So I think it's one of the foods or, or textures or things that I crave. And like, I love what you're saying here where you can take something like people do research on, let's say a, a healthy fat, like grapeseed or olive oil. And it, it can be a completely different thing of having a cold press virgin extracted, um, you know, non-processed, beautiful raw oil. And then that same ingredient when processed and or cooked can be the exact opposite of a beneficial food. Like fats are really delicate uh, vehicles for nutrition. And I think it's, it couldn't be, an, uh, and I, I would love to read your book someday. I haven't got a copy yet, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out <laughs> in the universe that yet. Rob's oh, going to find buddy. a way to get that, get that into my hands. When that yeah. happens, I'd love to see... Uh, more people like you paying attention to this paradox where you can't just say a fat is healthy. A fat is healthy only when it's in a certain state and it can be very unhealthy in other states, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So you have to take in consideration of magnitude, the amount. You can't just, just because a fat is healthy, you can't take it carte blanche. People, mm -hmm. and that goes with anything, protein. When somebody goes on the ketogenic diet, people become obsessed with these diets and they go on a trend and they think they're making a huge difference in people's lives. So they go completely extreme in the other direction. Carbs mm -hmm. are bad. Simple sugars are bad. Yeah, that's true. But that doesn't mean that you just eat copious amounts of protein and copious amounts of fat. It's, you're, you just can't. You can't just eat fat mm -hmm. as though it's a, I mean, maybe if you're living in the Arctic, that's a little bit different, mm -hmm. but we're not living in the Arctic. We're mm -hmm. just not. I mean, so you can't just eat carte blanche as much fat as you want and then not expect to gain weight or increase risk of cardiovascular disease or chronic disease, even, actually, I should say. Yeah. Even with stuff like, I'll listen to podcasts where they'll have, uh, and Tim Ferriss had somebody on uh, at some point in the past that was into 
uh, bodybuilding nutrition and he was recommending like eight servings of fish oil capsules a day like eight grams it was it's like ridiculous an astronomical it's, number it's, and it's totally in excess of what you ever find in a diet it is yeah there's no long-term data showing that that is a healthy choice but yet people no. get it you're like you're saying maybe they get some temporary results in their program and they then extrapolate it out into the world and say like hey this is a thing that people can do but i think that it's it's very short-sighted and um it could be dangerous oh and fish you want to talk uh, mentorship, coaching for sup so the supplement coach, fish oil, fish oil as a cat, you know, you could spend if, if, if everybody came to you only just for fish oils alone, <laughs> like that's, if there's only one reason to come to you, it's for fish oils that, that, you know, that Good should enough, be yeah. like, that's Big a topic. Difference. That is a topic we should discuss. We're going to, we're going to handle that for sure. <laughs> like, That'll be a, a multi-part series. <laughs> it could be, it could be like a, a, a like you could talk about it for a month. Probably that, yeah. that <laughs> it, it's, so I'm not, but you're right. It's, it's ridiculous. So people are taking just copious amounts of fat and they think that nothing's going to happen because, you know, and same with, same with the grass fed pasture raised mm -hmm. butter. And I'm a fan. I, I love, I mean, who doesn't? I just, I love butter. I love cream. And if it's organic pasture, is it better than conventional? It can be, you know, it can in terms of the inflammatory pathways and so forth, but you still need to take into consideration magnitude just because that, you know, you're feeding the, cow grass and it might have a beneficial effect on your omega-3 versus omega-3 ratio and inflammation mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you could just spread it a thick nice helping every single day mm -hmm. and and it, nothing's going to happen to you your body mm -hmm. still needs to get through that fat and there are other things that go on in the body as well which can oxidize the fat that's another thing i talk about in the book one one way is cooking it heating the oil but there are many many other things in the bodies that can actually change that fat. So even if you're taking, let's say raw, healthy fat in the body, you know, there are, there are definitely some internal, um, oxidative mechanisms, oxidative mechanisms. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I mean, even omega threes, you can overdose in omega threes. We need omega threes in a ratio in a relationship to six. Let's say for example, somebody were to make a diet that is completely devoid of sixes and all omega threes thinking like, well, we know three is the most important and six, well, it can be inflammatory. So let's get rid of that. You're going to screw up your metabolism. <laughs> it's too much of a good thing uh, and is not the right way to go. So I think in summary, we can say that even though we're talking about fats and today's episode is mainly about coconut oil, uh, it, it's all about the state that it's in and the quantity that you're using it. Um, nothing that we can say here today is going to override those uh, stabilization, those, those uh, things that are going to cap any of the benefits that uh, coconut oil may or may not have. No, right? I agree fully. Cool. So you don't use it to cook with. You use grape. I use grapeseed as well, but I do use some coconut. Uh, I, I, have, by the have, way, I have used yeah. it to cook with, and I think it is one of the better oils to cook with. Actually, okay. the real reason I don't cook with it all the time is because my wife hates the taste of coconut. But I do oh. think it does hold up better than a lot of other oils. I prefer it over, let's say, canola oil. Yeah. And canola you can have high quality canola oil but a lot of the canola oil is just hard to find and highly processed and just it's just a, a big mess it's really really hard to tell which canola oil is much better than the others you can you can look for an organic certified non-gmo project verified canola oil maybe and it just i don't know i like sunflower oil a lot uh, but in moderate amounts again because you know again you could use vegetable oils in general right very high in omega-6 and they're in basically, if, you, if we're eating out in restaurants or if you eat snacks, mm -hmm. you know, which you and I don't at all. Never, never had a snack. Um, you know, you're already getting an abundance of that. But I think, I think safflower oil is, is a big one. It's used everywhere, especially in more premium potato chips, which I would mm -hmm. know a little bit about. And sunflower, I think. Mm -hmm.